Okay, we're going to do a little analogy video. Um, this is just uh, basically to show uh, lean manufacturing and waste and how your, your company can grow and profit uh, more strictly by cutting out waste and nothing else. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get like a little pitcher, a little plastic one, something cheap, you know, you can get it from a dollar store or whatever. Um, you're going to drill some holes, the bombs, some small holes. These are going to represent uh, your overhead, uh, utilities, wages, insurance, taxes, and, and rent, you know, any other overhead expenses. You know, rent's, a, rent's a big one because it's going to also, uh, that leads into um, overproduction and inventory where uh, you need all that space, the extra space, because uh, you're paying per square foot. And when you can use all that space for something else, and we'll talk about that later. And, and then you have the, the next, above those little holes, you're going to have bigger holes. are going to represent waste. Um, and these holes are going to represent, you know, usually the seven deadly wastes, uh, eight, nine, ten, where we'll go into that in more detail on the next slides. But uh, you'll, you'll get the idea. And then you're going to have a line above it you're going to draw, and then that's going to be your profit line. Uh, so you're going to have water, you're going to pour it in the top, that's going to represent your revenue, and that's going to keep running. And I'm going to have it run here uh, as I'm talking. I'm going to go back and forth between this slide and a little video just showing of the water running. Now where you get the idea, water's coming in, you know, revenue stops, but bills keep going, you know, so obviously that water's going to drain out if uh, that, that stops. Um, and then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a growth line above that, uh, kind of a little bit uh, model after the New York Stock Exchange, you know, which uh, for someone like myself who's worked for public companies most of their life, um, it shows a value in it. Um, especially if you own company stock as an employee, it's really good because you implement these measures and you see your stock going up, which is really great. Um, and just, you know, uh, some people don't really grasp that concept, but, you know, that's fine. Everybody tweets his own, but um, it's something that benefited me over time. And whenever I work for a company, if, uh, if I'm in a position of influence or uh, to where I get to have uh, my, my way or get a... Um, you know, I can implement my procedures. You know, they I get full full free will. Um, then definitely, I'll, I'll invest in the company and I'll try and buy, uh, buy more stocks as well. Uh, above that, you're going to have a red line, which is a peak, and I'll explain later that that's actually where you're starting to level off. Um, I'll show on a, a little limitation graph on the next slide too, as well, that where you kind of level off, and, and that's where you start making the decisions to. Uh, you know, yeah, sure, it's going to help grow eventually, but it's, uh, you're going to start, you know, cutting offices, and you're going to start uh, moving, you know, out of state to cheaper locations, and it's just that, that point where it starts getting to where it's uh, pretty bad, and talk about self-preservation and the people who make the decisions, you know, because their jobs are solely dependent on cutting costs, and anyway, and then, uh, okay, and you have revenue at the top. So this is a P number one, this is uh, for plant number one, represents... And uh, we'll go. Oh, you know, actually, you know, you talk about these big, big holes at the bottom here. Uh, first on the far left, you have theft, um, which, uh, yeah, if you have um, your parts over and over, and uh, you do a study and you show these certain parts uh, last you for about two years, but yet you're replacing them every uh, three, four months, and uh, these keep disappearing. You don't, you don't know what's going on. You're kind of uh, confused. Everybody's confused. What, what's? Why do we keep ordering these parts over and over? They don't when they last longer than this, and Finally, you, you get wise and you get some cameras or what, and you kind of see that you have some employees stealing some parts and taking them home or sell them on eBay or Craigslist, whatever they do. Um, yeah, it's pretty bad. And, you know, it kind of uh, hits you in the stomach there. And, uh, and fortunately, that's something you have to get under control and find some method, you know, and put in place for a theft, even though that's not under the waste, but it definitely is a big one. You can just do internet searches and you'll see all kinds of stories where, uh, yeah, employees have, have stolen from companies or enormous amounts. Uh, vandalism is another one. Um, you do have disgruntled employees that will do, uh, um, you know, just vandalize your equipment, your property. Um, we've had kids before. We have expensive touch screens, and uh, they get written up for something one day, and all of a sudden the touch screen's busted, and it's like somebody punched it, and and the guy was swears up and down he barely touched it, and yeah, those things can take some force. Yeah, that's like a three to five thousand dollar touch screen too, as well, uh, for a, a control panel. Um, there's also uh, for vandalism if someone wanted a vacation day off and, and uh, they got denied and all of a sudden a machine goes down that they're working on and you investigate looking at it later see some wires were pulled out of place or some wires got cut and and they, they swear up and down they don't know what happened so I mean that that's downtime that costs you a lot of money as well 
Uh, the next one is sales. Uh, sales reps cutting side deals, um, undercutting, uh, you know, doing their own thing on the side. You know, and they always, you know, especially the ones you hear say, "My employee, this my or my customer, this is my customer." Like, no, it's not. It's not your customer. It's the company's customer. Because when you're terminated or let go, um, you're, I know you're going to try and take those customers with you. And of course, a good scenario is we had one not too long ago who uh, went straight to a competitor, and when the day they were let her go. Um, you know, they did tell her, but all of a sudden she didn't have her company phone with her. She didn't know where it was. Um, you know, sales reps always have their phone on them, but all of a sudden she didn't. And uh, she didn't bring it back to like three days later. And, uh, of course, that gave her time to empty out all of her contacts, too, as well. So, and then went straight to a competitor. Um, next one of on that one is accidents. Um, yeah, definitely a lost time. You have a recordables um, insurance rates going up or what, and... You, yeah, uh, accidents a big one, so you need to implement you know your measures. Yeah, of course you want to eliminate uh, any type of hazards, um, or implement the engineering controls, administrative controls, or PPE. Um, I'll get to that later. And then there's uh, failures as well, catastrophic failures. Um, it's a biggie, like with customers, they um, you can have like a uh, yes yeah, for overhead, uh, reducing overhead. I mean everybody pretty much knows what overhead is. I don't think you need to go into uh, an explanation on that. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of ideas out there. I mean, there's, I, it is, list goes on and on of all kinds of the measures you can take to uh, reduce your cost. Um, and this should have been something that should have been implemented already within companies. I mean, this has uh, been popular for a long, long time in all industries. So um, if, if someone hasn't implemented this yet, they're they're way behind the game. Um, there's different categories I guess you could say there's electrical uh, efficiency energy efficiency there's uh, facility air leaks there's uh, you got your your hot and cold your your heating ventilation air conditioning you know areas you want all that sealed tight there's a lot of tools out there you can use to bring those to light you know and uh, the focus areas you know thermal imager is a really good one and uh, see official water systems you know you have uh, including your landscape you don't want to have any leaks make sure all that's uh, sealed tight you have a procurement department that uh, negotiates for lower cost, supply costs, uh, and so on. Um, the key here is, as actually is uh, from a corporate level or standpoint, is poor management of the satellite locations or facility locations out spread out through the U.S. Um, or the world. Um, there's no corporate auditing. Um, it's really bad. You, you definitely want to send somebody out at least twice a year. Show up unannounced, go through all the records. You want to go through your uh, transportation records, your incoming material, um, you know, cradle to grave audits from material coming in to the way it goes out to customers, to scrap, any byproducts, whatever, you know, and, and it, because uh, where you don't have any corporate auditing, you're, you're leaving yourself up for failure uh, or setting yourself up. Um, the, the little graph here at the bottom, pretty much for overhead, you have lighting fixed, you know, just to show how your cost goes down and down. The revenue is coming in still, you know, pretty even flow. So, you, of course, you got that uh, water is going up. Um, you got your uh, profits are going up, and your since your bills are uh, reduced, uh, air leaks and pretty much you flat line at the bottom. And then, of course, uh, inflation brings that back up over time. You know, it's not going to stay down that low. Because uh, I know supplier costs, you, they drop, and then a year later they go, they creep right back up. And then uh, the red line is where you get to that danger area. Um, it's a point where really, you know, yes, you, you're going to be making more money, uh, but you really don't uh, want to get into this where you start shutting down offices. And you're you're uh, letting go employees you've had for years, and, and don't be unethical. And, and the ones that are close to retirement, let them go, and saying you're eliminating position. And then by law, you hold it for six months. You don't, you know, fill that position. And then you have somebody come in who's younger, and uh, who, of course, gets a lot less pay, and uh, who accumulates less uh, vacation. And, and that's just, that's just a little unethical there. So it, you don't want to really get into uh, to where you start shutting down offices and plants all over just to move it to a cheaper location and start all over again. Yeah, some of the corporates definitely, uh, if that's their sole purpose, that's why I have the little self-preservation off the side there. Look that up. Um, because if you hire somebody with the sole purpose to uh, cut costs or uh, with no other duties, that's eventually going to lead to a closure of facilities, elimination of jobs, and constant vendor changes. And uh, I've seen it to where even this person is eventually let go themselves. And I've gone through this three times through company reorganizations. Um, if you're smart, if you're as an employee, 
catch on to it and you start investing yourself and you can keep an eye on those stocks and you'll see how it keeps going up so uh, to the next one okay for the seven wastes uh, that you want to eliminate uh, keep in mind this is those uh, bigger holes above the overhead uh, these are the areas where you can eliminate and uh, streamline your process a lot better and definitely uh, start raising your profits even more uh, like I said before, strictly just by eliminating waste, uh, that's all you're doing, uh, nothing else, and you can see how your profits go up. So uh, there's seven plus, you know, there's eight, there's the uh, Six Sigma, of course, and then, uh, of course, the Toyota production system, there is eight, the utilizing the employee talents. Um, I'm going to start uh, at the top instead of jump around here. So you have uh, transportation is the first one. Transportation basically is for material handling, the flow of your material. You, this is another cradle to grave. Um, you want to follow through just like if you were going to audit. And uh, you do a spaghetti diagram is, is a good tool here. Um, you need to have a facility map. Definitely uh, mark it up. Now, if you don't have a facility map, you uh, definitely need uh, something. If you have your emergency evacuation routes uh, posted somewhere, uh, you can use that to start, start with and uh, that, that type of map. Mark it up. Um, in meetings you're in, you know, have it all laid out and then, you know, do your line, follow from the time your raw goods arrive to where they're staged, uh, to the point where they go to the line for your prefab, uh, to your finished goods, all to your work in progress, uh, to other staging locations, uh, to the final staging locations, and of course out to shipping. Um, draw a line following this, and if you go back in, in the opposite direction that you started, then definitely that's an improvement area. You want to move uh, some racks around uh, some of your storage areas or your uh, staging areas. Um, rearrange it where it has one even flow all the way through the facility. Uh, you're not going back or backtracking uh, for any of those. Um, if you don't have any choice, um, maybe read about where you have your machines and uh, go from there but you get the point you definitely want to do a map like this or a facility where you look down on it you don't want to have it to where um, you're just writing it out on a piece of paper line items you want to see it um, and then of course ABC analysis is another tool to use all your raw goods you want to have uh, close to the area where you use them um, for the your your you know your sub assembly parts you can have those uh, the racks right by the machine as much as possible if you can. The ones you use the most, you know, look up ABC analysis, and you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and then there's also value stream mapping, which is another tool that's being used for for uh, transportation to help uh, reduce a lot of that. So for the next one is motion. Um, motion pretty much is a, a workstation. You have uh, you know your employees you want to move as little as possible. You want to have everything right there. This also falls into ergonomics. So uh, if you have your safety guy in your in your group and you're, you're doing an ergonomics evaluation, that's that's a good one. He needs to be on your team uh, as far as uh, when you do these activities. Yeah, Trim Masters, we did this uh, twice a month, um, two days out of the month, and we call it the Jajukin activities. Uh, went out on the floor with uh, tape measures, uh, with cameras, and with uh, stopwatches. We had all kinds of stuff with us. Uh, to measure and and to see what we can improve and really what we we're looking for is shaving half a second off of cycle times if we could shave half a second off of cycle time you know it adds up over time um, I don't know if you remember that old commercial back in the 90s I think it was where guys walk around saying I saved a nickel I saved a nickel and and then uh, the one of the, the the head management guy says wow it's a, a nickel for every transaction and he goes we do like so many hundred thousand transactions a month well, we'll think about that um, I do know, like when I was in telecommunications, when we uh, discovered we shaved off a little bit of a uh, couple cents per postage just by adding the postal code on the end of our, our zip codes, um, that shaved off on all of our mailings. And we, you know, of course, in you know telecommunications, we had the phone company way back then, and all of our bills that went out, uh, shaving that little bit off of uh, uh, for every every bill that went out, that was a big, huge uh, improvement there. So. Um, who else we got here? Oh, custom made flow racks. Uh, definitely, we've been doing that for years, making custom racks. That's the best way to go. Um, and custom made workstations are modified. You can go to any type of uh, in industrial supply place and you can buy a desk or, or a workstation you know, that is set up, but it's not unique to your operations and to your applications that you use. So just modify it. Um, you got some uh, fabricators, <clears throat> excuse me, in your, in your maintenance uh, guys. Uh, 
some of your mechanics might be good fabricators definitely utilize that utilize their talents and uh, have them modify the uh, workstations um, then of course 5s to workstations where it just gets organized and you outline everything and uh, just make small improvements over time that's the whole purpose of Kaizen is uh, making small improvements over time steady improvements you don't want to make a big giant improvement at once because you know like we're all human we get overwhelmed and you in little bits at a time allows the operators to adjust to it and then uh, so on. I think if you look at these pictures you get the point of uh, having everything and, and you know right there by hand there's what's called the strike zone too um, having it uh, from armpits and knees it's like in baseball you know, having area everything right in good reach and I already talked about range of motion so next one will be waiting waiting is uh, basically uh, you know you, it's a waste of time uh, pretty much uh, you have andons which is a tool a good tool to use um, been using those for a while in the automotive industry um, we have airproof sensors for flow racks that uh, you have a, an empty spot that starts uh, starts to clock and if your one rack or one bin uh, storage bin or whatever it takes you five minutes to empty it and uh, you have your sensor set at two minutes because if there's an empty spot for two minutes then you have your alarm going off letting uh, your material handler know he needs to get over there and, and refill it um, you have a list of downtime activities which really helps um, it definitely it's very poor management if you have downtime all the time and all you do is have the guy sweep um, there's always so much you can do when you sweep the floor so definitely um, have your guys a list of downtime activities lots of things that you can do Johnson controls is really good at that uh, they did a lot of 5s activities whenever the line would go down I mean you had operators they just scatter and everybody has their own duties they go do and it was, it was really great uh, one guy he goes and grabs uh, he redoes the uh, you know the standard work um, repost it you know make sure everything's clean uh, another person will go organize some racks you know, there's lots of things you can do um, you can go dump the garbage you know not just sweep the floor you know and, and uh, maybe one guy goes sweep the floor but not everybody on the line go no go gauges another one for waiting and it helps speed up the the time for for quality checks um, quick change tools this med uh, maybe we'll talk about it later I have a, a maintenance presentation we can probably I think I'm going to be posting soon anyway and we'll cover all that order triggers com bonds you know uh, those are something as well too to reduce the uh, process of going around looking for for part numbers and looking them up that that is a huge waste of time too because if you're a buyer um, you're the type of person who has to order par, uh, you know parts or supplies and you know how long it takes to look something up you got to have it right there and having a guy come turn in a card to you that card tells you the part number tells you where it goes tells you who you use um, you pop it up usually in a CMS system or um, in your database and it's a lot faster so that's that's waiting. That's just some ideas. Um, I guess on the andons, I could talk a little bit more. Uh, at Trim Masters, when we were there. We actually had a you know the big big boards. Um, had a switch at the at the workstation. Whenever uh, you know the line would go down or they they need something for whatever reason, usually it was only three. As a supervisor, it's maintenance or material handler. Uh, what you do is you put the switch on one of those and you hit the on button and then uh, uh, the big boards would light up and it will show uh, your, your cell where you're located at and then it will play a distinct music. That music is specific to one of those three. Uh, it's a different tone for each one so and everybody knew what their, their tone was. Uh, and maintenance, if it was a maintenance tone, a mechanic would go over there if he was assigned to that area. Um, supervisor would be going back over to the line. Usually supervisor heads over there anyway no matter what the sound is just to see what's going on. And then, uh, of course, you have material handler. You have little lights, which are the uh, for like workstations. Um, they have a little cord, and the end on cord you pull, and your light comes on or what. And again, Joss Control is a good example here because theirs theirs was really loud, and it was like a like a, just annoying noise, and you wanted to hurry up and shut that off. So that's waiting. So for the next one is inventory. Um, inventory um, again, you're you're paying valuable. Uh, you know that's valuable space you're paying per square foot uh, on your rent and uh, you're, you got to utilize that space as much as possible um, you want room that's used for producing products and creating revenue you, know, you don't want to have an old boneyard of old machines which I've seen a lot of facilities um, traveling around that just you kind of wonder I don't know what they're thinking it has dust on it and you, you ask around and everybody says it's been sitting there for years so that, that's very very poor management so uh, 
or even full of old rejected material. Um, again, just recently I've, I've witnessed where it's uh, called MRB, just sitting around, um, taking up room uh, for years. And it never should go that long. So to have it resolved right away and get it out. And then, of course, yeah, this is uh, for inventory. You want leveling, production, you know, forecasting your planners. They should be taking care of all that. Um, so definitely your, utilize your space as much as possible. I think that's self-explanatory. Also, inventory falls under um, overproduction um, and, uh, and space. The space is one of those uh, little side ones for the, uh, the waste. So next one is overproduction. Um, you know, what's unnecessary? Um, again, if you're producing, if you're paying overtime, now you're, you're paying more wages, but you're still, your products don't, the price stays the same. So now you're losing uh, revenue, losing profit on that. And again, uh, overproduction, you have limited space. You want you know, that space used for, for other things, you know, to make revenue off of. And um, it's like a maze. Uh, and when you have overproduction, you have, uh, you know, material sitting all over the place. Um, and you have these forklifts trying to maneuver through all here, or you have uh, these uh, order pickers trying to maneuver through all your material. And uh, I've seen it many times. Uh, the forklift eventually hits one or what, and it, it damages it. And now, now there's uh, scrap. So uh, if you get a, you start packing everything in tight, uh, you're just asking to um, for an accident to happen or for damage to happen. Scrap material. Um, if you're in some industry where you're, uh, you know, has a shelf life, uh, you don't want to have it sitting around for a while because the clock starts ticking once uh, you start putting, you, you finish producing that material and it starts sitting around. So, and then of course you have constant changeovers when you're doing overproduction as well. And then usually that comes from poor sales reps too and poor planning and, um, definitely want to address that and take care of it. So that's overproduction. Overprocessing, um. Now, this one is, is kind of funny that I've seen that we've made jokes about in the past. You know, we call it overkill. Um, it's very excessive uh, whenever you, you do something. It applies at all different aspects uh, in, in the industries. You have even maintenance, as you can see at the bottom. You have all these different Allen wrenches you can choose from when there is only need one. And you're going through, it's excessive. You know, keep it simple, make it simple. It causes confusion. Um, it's counterproductive and you know you lose uh, you have too much information or you lose someone's attention um, even your uh, work work instructions need to be as simple as possible um, if you you know you have too much information and then again you're it's over processing uh, so you see the little graphs you have there where you have a little too much too little information not enough and then you have just right and then you have excessive and too much so over processing it's like I said it's uh, excessive overkill I think you you Get the idea by now. Uh, defects. Uh, defects is a big one. Um, it, it's all kinds of airproofing methods you can implement to eliminate defects, and I, I have some slides on that. Which um, I'll uh, actually I'll be a second presentation. I'll put in here to follow this one. But there's a uh, you get loss in labor, material costs, you scrap. Um, the, it can it be recycled? If not, it's garbage. Uh, customer returns, which uh, you know you. You add in the loss of shipping fees now. You have uh, the shipping you lose over there, shipping bringing it back, and then of course you know we ship it again. Um, and so, like I said, there's airproofing ways you can modify your lines, uh, lots of different ways, uh, tightening your parameters, and modifying your machine. So, uh, we'll get into that later. So, that is your seven ways. Let's see if there's anything else on here. Um, again, the uh, the additional was the employee talents being unused. You know, usually it's management stubbornness. I've, I've talked to lots of guys in many different industries. Uh, we're talking the food industry, uh, and construction industry, automotive industry. I mean, it's all the same, uh, pretty much. Where they say that uh, you know there are supervisors or managers who just will not implement a change because it was not their idea, and that's wrong. You need to overcome your ego, and you're all a team. Come together and get that. Uh, Get them implemented. You know, it's all for the best. Um, and and even if uh, you want recognition and you're not getting that recognition, at least plant the seed. And then uh, if someone comes, you know, comes up with it, but in a different way, three to six months later, it's happened to me many times. You know, it's like whatever. At least it's getting done. You know, so you know, get over that and let's all move forward. 
I mean, number nine is space, which we've talked about that pretty much with inventory and, and you know paying per square foot, and you're either not utilizing the space right or you're utilizing it wrong. Same thing. Um, you get the point. And then of course injuries. We talked about that, where you want to eliminate any hazards as possible. You let me see. You have engineering controls, administrative controls, and PPE. So get with your safety guy, and, and you guys, uh, like I said, have him on your team to to uh, get them involved. So meetings are improved. You know, you have post Connery in your accountability room. Um, I mean, those meetings need to be productive. If all you're in there to do is talk and, and not really get anything accomplished, um, your meetings are being set up wrong, and that usually is your plant manager or your director, or someone there who oversees that, who, um, who needs to have an outline planned. And, and there really needs to be a good outline for these, these meetings. They need to be organized and, and not just show up and talk. So... Well, I think you get the point now.